Hello, YouTubers. We're going to be demonstrating uh, an input-output uh, load resistor test. Okay. Um, now, <clears throat> there's a little bit of balancing that has to be done here. I'm going to take a sip of some coffee here. So I'm using a, a wall adapter here that puts out 12.29 volts, which I'm going to show. Uh, I'm going to be using this meter to read voltages on the output right here and on the input. But I'm using this because the voltage is uh, pretty steady like that and provides plenty of current. As with the battery, it's harder, you know, it drops a little bit more. Than usual so uh, because of that it's harder to see but you can do this very well off a of battery especially a nice big battery plenty of amperage so uh, things level off and steady pretty good so that's the purpose of this and this is why I'm using this but I have a meter on the input the read input current so here see we got the negative running through the negative of our, our meter okay and then out the positive just to show that right here out the positive into our circuitry <laughs> oh, and I got neon on here across the uh, switch uh, to protect the uh, the switch I find that's the best way um, if you put like a diode uh, across the motor coil to try to circulate the collapsing magnetic field the current goes way up so I, I quit doing that and I've written out right here what to expect um, also I, I, I believe I had this motor coil just a little bit closer and I think the generator coil a little bit closer so if you have a basic motor like this uh, making those adjustments uh, can sometimes help but so I got the meter reading the current going in okay and uh, when things get up to speed here I'm going to take use this meter to read our voltage going in right now it's going to read the voltage coming out which is uh, sitting right across this capacitor and I have a resistor which I'm going to take off and this is a, a, a 1000 ohm resistor or a 1k ohm resistor and again we have focusing problems not sure why anyways so our input voltage is going to be about 12.29 volts and our meter is going to show 40 milliamps of current for a total and you just multiply that together and you get your watts milliwatts in this uh, setup so 491 92 milliwatts it's about almost half a watt on the output when our capacitor is charged to 40 volts at that moment okay what we do is we take our, our 1k ohm resistor and you have to take the uh, voltage drop of whatever it is um, and divide it into um, the resistance and that gives you current and we get the same amount of current at that moment now you know when we get 1.6 watts out I put milliwatts that should be watts because it's one full watt and then you just divide that into that and get your 325 percent but uh, let me uh, I want to make it a little bit more clear when you when you're measuring the power on your output this is just a resistor that's going directly across our capacitor and this measurement system is very accurate it's very very accurate because what you're doing is you're you're getting power stored in your capacitor and it's running through a resistor and if you were to stick a meter in series where this uh, resistor is at 
you'll see that it's the exact same current. And so we can use Ohm's law to get that very accurate current through here. So all you do is you get the voltage drop that our meter is going to read, get our voltage drop, and then whatever that resist this resistance is, you know, you take your say it's 10 volts well then you just divide it by uh say this was 10 ohms you know i don't know the exact figures but that'll give you the current so basically voltage divided by resistance will give you the current flowing through our load resistor here so going through it and the voltage is measured across it which is across the capacitor too and this is how we do our load resistor test on the output and it's very accurate when you do it that way using the ohm's law again the ohm's law is just the voltage drop and you divide by the resistance gives you current if you check that current with a meter it'll give you the exact same result so we don't have to use a meter to read current we can just do a simple calculation uh, another thing is this is all about balance and if you were to just leave this loaded on here, you will see we'll, we will drop quickly to unity and then under unity. So this is a temporary effect, and so it's important important to do uh, certain kinds of switchings so we can keep this energy up without killing everything. But it's also important, this is a fairly large capacitor, so it's going to uh, take a little while okay to store up the energy but as this begins to charge up it becomes less and less load actually on our rotor to where our rotor can reach full speed and our input current can become the lowest and we can get a roundabout figure so I'm going to turn this on uh, here we go hopefully I don't have to move this any closer but we got this set up so I'm going to turn it on here and you see, it takes about half an amp to get started. Uh, and then over here, we got some voltage building up fairly quickly. So we'll actually have to actually drain that off with our load. But see, it's already at 50 volts. So I got to bleed that out a little bit to bring that down. And there's very good. Uh, power and current flowing through this this is actually hot this is very hot but I gotta drain that down a little bit let's see we got down now to about 80 but I'm gonna take this back off again I'll let that build back up which will allow this to be less loaded so we can get this input current to go down goes and see our voltage level over here is slowing down a little bit which is actually good because this is just a 50 volt capacitor so so we're already down to 54 53 milliamps of current this is at 50 volts again so we're going to drain that down a little bit drain that down stop it like at 40 volts or so and then let it build back up that's just so we can get into a nice resonance uh, so see we we're already down to huh what's going on there that takes a while I've seen this go all the way down to like 38 milliamps okay so there the voltage is dropping and this camera electronics is affecting this somehow maybe not well see we went over so let's drain that off oh, I know what's going on here I know what's going on here uh, see it's dropping there if I move this a little bit closer a little bit closer here I 
have to try to line this up with the width of the rotor, but see, so now we got 41 milliamps. There's our 40. And this is going up. And of course, I don't have this very close either. But, but look, so we got 39. So this is right about where we were at before for the 40 milliamps of current. And I'll show voltage here in a minute. We got 39. We got this building up. So we, even if we use the power up from here temporarily, that's why you got to do this in pulses like this. You drop that down to about 40 and then take it off. Let it build back up. The 40. Let's see. And uh, look at this. The input current is at 37. 36 even. The voltage is... Uh, let's try moving this a little bit closer. Get a little bit more power in there. 46. Uh, this remains at 37. So we can temporarily use this energy up, let's say from 50 volts, to uh, let's drop that down all the way down to 40, take it off. Okay, I was a little late on that. And uh, very hot, which represents our 1.60 watts. Because uh, this is only like what a half watt resistor, and you can feel that this is much more than one watt. It's actually almost two watts. I got 36 millivolt milliamps. So that's building up again. So you can see if we start it from 50 volts like that and drop it down, just the 40 volts even. And then take it off right around that area of 40 volts at our 1k, which gives us 40 milliamps. The currents are the same, the voltages are much higher, and so we get more wattage out. At that point, I want to stress we're not doing this all the time and putting a continuous load. So on our uh, flywheel so if we just discharge that down from 50 to 42 see and I'm using 40 volts I'm using 40 volts at, at right at 40 volts it's at 1.60 watts but I'm doing this from 50 volts so that's actually higher than 1.60 volts and then draining it down Sorry, not volts, watts, and then taking it off right at, at about 40. So it's actually more than 100 or 1.60 watts, maybe 2 watts. And then you divide that out, output against input, it gives you 325. So uh, that's at 36. And even when we load that down, I'm going to load it down. And as we load it down, there it goes down. Look at the input current. It doesn't really change that much. It actually dropped. Uh, so we can keep letting this build up and getting our power out in pulses. So uh, we can keep our input pretty much the same at half a watt and pulse this out. Continue to keep getting our, our, our higher watts. And this is very accurate. If I were to put this meter to read current at right around 40 volts in place of this resistor, it would show the same current. So you just take voltage, divide it by resistance. You'll get the exact same current the meter will read. So that's very accurate. It's a very accurate way to read output. See, look, I just used that amount of wattage. Well, in that one pulse and kept this down uh, I really don't want to take this off you'll have to take my word for it because it's hard to do with just two hands or one hand to read this but this is at 12.29 I 
I guess I can uh, try to take it off and show you. It's kind of hard to do, but do it anyways here. It's very hard to do. Maybe I can do this. Uh, well, there we go. I balanced that there. Put this over here. There we go. So I'm measuring that. There's our. Well, try to get that on there. 12.29. Okay, so that is 12.29, and uh, I have to drain some of this energy off because I, I know it's past 50 volts, and we do that pretty good. Uh, so it's all a matter of balance, and uh, not using your output power continuously. Or we'll lose all our energy if we take it out little bits at a time. Then we can uh, we can keep our output up. And this is all without the coil sorting circuit. It's not being powered. But uh, take this back. Oh, connect that back. Let's see where? Oh, I hit the AC. Uh. There's the 55 volts. It's over our capacitor capacity. Drain it off a little bit. I'm just going to drop it to about 43. And see, right at that moment, about probably like 2 watts went through that. So, anyways, that's that's what we're looking at when we temporarily, temporarily pulse our uh, wattage out. We're seeing that in each pulse. Alright, so uh, that's it for now. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And thanks for watching.